might the worldwide sedan of the future be like? In answer, Peugeot offers us this, the 408. Part saloon, part coupe SUV, part practical hatch. The brand claims it's a new breed of car. It'll certainly need a new breed of customer. To hatch or to SUV, that is the question. Or at least it is, if you're looking for compact, yet spacious and practical family or business conveyance. There needs to be a third way, a blank space in the market not really filled by compact saloons or coupe SUVs, but possibly resolved by this car, Peugeot's 408. The 408 is an innovative, style-led fastback with elements that could conceivably appeal to customers in all the categories just mentioned. Conventionality has characterised previous 4 Series Peugeots, but this one is anything but. The three, rather than four, digit name designates the company's wish for this car to be seen as distinct from its range of SUVs. But there's plenty of crossover in the chunky aesthetics. Yet at the same time, it's a kind of futuristic take on what the family hatch of the future might be like. Under the skin, it's based on and was designed alongside a family hatch very much of the present, Peugeot's third generation 308. You could be forgiven for being a touch confused by all this, particularly if you were aware that in Asia and South America, Peugeot already sells a very different model badged 408, a conventional saloon, on sale since 2010. There, this more avant-garde hatch contender is badged 408X to set it apart, which brings to mind the other almost identically engineered Stellantis group take on this kind of design, the Citroen C5X. Peugeot claims its pricier model is a sportier confection. We'll see. It's certainly one of the most different 4 Series Peugeot cars we've seen, and there have been plenty as part of a model line dating all the way back to the 401 of 1934. But is it really as different as the brand thinks it is? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. Having looked at a 408, you're left uncertain what it's trying to be, then driving one might not answer too many more questions. The fastback visual demeanor sporty, the soft orientated ride quality isn't. The grippy little eye cockpit steering wheel feels ready for wrist flick B road brawling. The mandatory and rather hesitant eight speed auto gearbox doesn't. Put aside preconceptions and genre pigeonholing and you'll be happier. Four series Peugeots have always been comfort orientated and the auto gearbox swaps smoothly when unstressed. Plus, you might well find the steering to be actually a quite nicely weighted and engaging setup, providing you can get on with the IE cockpit arrangement we just mentioned, which sees you viewing the compact dial cluster over the top of the wheel rim rather than conventionally through the spokes. Not everyone likes this, of course, but we're thankful for it because otherwise there'd be little to set a modern Peugeot apart from its identically engineered Vauxhall and Citroen Stellantis Group cousins. Certainly not the engines, which are the same as you'll find in everything from a Vauxhall Astra to this model's close cousin, the Citroen C5X. And of course, are also shared with an even closer relative, the Peugeot 308. You might, though, still marvel at the technology in the hybrid power plants, which mates an 81 kilowatt electric motor with a 1.6 litre PureTech petrol engine that primarily contributes to total outputs of either 180 or 225 horsepower. The 12.4 kilowatt hour battery that powers the motor should deliver about 40 miles of EV range before the engine cuts in. If you want more, then you'll need the E408 model that was still some way off launch at the time of this test, an EV that makes a 54 kilowatt hour battery with a 156 horsepower electric motor. 
We'll come back to the hybrid options in a few moments, but much as Peugeot wants to concentrate on them, we can't help feeling that making a massive saving by sticking with the brand's conventional 1.2-litre PureTech power plant would be a cleverer option for a potential 408 customer. That's what we've elected to test here anyway. At the time of this model's launch and our test in spring 2023, the brand wasn't offering this unit with its 48 volt mild hybrid tech, which pairs the engine with a 28 horsepower electric motor working via a six speed auto gearbox. But as we filmed, we were imminently expecting to see that lightly electrified power plant made available in the 408 range. In 308 models, this engine will sound the death knell for the 1.5 litre blue HDI diesel, but black pump fueled motoring was never part of the product plan for this 408 lineup. But back to what we're actually driving here, the only conventional engine offered to 408 folk, the brand's familiar three-cylinder PureTech power plant in its most usual 130 horsepower state of tune, necessarily allied to the auto transmission we referenced earlier. This gearbox comes with steering wheel paddles and it's one of those eco-minded autos that constantly hunts around for the highest possible ratio, with the speed of its occasionally slothful changes dictated by your choice of setting from this multi-driving mode selector. The predictable options are eco, normal and sport that simultaneously change the dash graphics to green, blue and red respectively. With Sport selected, it doesn't feel much slower than in an equivalent 308, despite a porky 103 kilograms of extra body weight. With the 62 mile an hour sprint dispatched in 10.4 seconds, just over half a second slower, en route to the same top speed of 130 miles an hour. That acceleration time doesn't sound especially sprightly, does it? And with just 170 newton meters of torque to pull you along, it certainly won't feel it when you've got a car full of passengers. Still, refinement is excellent, particularly if you've avoided base trim and got yourself a 408 with acoustic laminated front side windows. In theory, the alternative plug-in hybrid version should offer a good deal more fizz. The total outputs we referenced earlier for these variants suggest that, as do the performance figures. 8.1 seconds en route to 140 miles an hour for the hybrid 180, and 7.8 seconds on the way to 145 miles an hour for the top hybrid 225. In reality though, saddling this 408 with the PHEV power plant's extra 304 kilograms of curb weight more than blunts the real world effect of that extra system power to a point that a mere 66 newton meters of extra torque is unable to compensate for. Adding the extra weight of three baby Asian elephants to your 408 also has an inevitably detrimental effect through the bends. This simpler PureTech version will be a far more engaging thing to punt along if you're on your favorite secondary route or running late on the school run. But the draw of being able to drive your 408 for up to 40 miles without troubling fossil fuel is certainly strong, providing you can stomach the substantial price premium the brand wants for its PHEV tech. We can't imagine why you'd want to pay even more to trade up from a hybrid 180 to a hybrid 225 408 variant that, as far as we can see, doesn't offer any really useful incremental benefits at all over its lesser PHEV stablemate. Either way, as usual with the company's plug-in models, there's the curious combination of frugal electrification tinseled around a 1.6-litre petrol turbo PureTech engine dropped from mainstream use a few years back because it wasn't economic enough. With PHEV 408 motoring, the steering wheel paddles alter brake regeneration rather than gear ratios, and you get a different drive mode system with its own three distinct settings, though in reality, you'll almost always use only one of them hybrid, which optimizes alternation of electric and internal combustion power. The other two options are electric, which allows for 100% electric driving, but uses up your EV range pretty quickly, and sport, which uses only engine power for maximum performance, but will nullify the reason why you paid so much for this variant in the first place. Overall, though, we think you might well decide that less is more when it comes to your choice of 408 powertrain. 
Either way, you'll get a car that further endorses Peugeot's push to be a premium segment player. Helped by trendy tech like matrix headlights, night vision, automatic lane changing and curve speed adaptation. A more straightforward 308 hatch, of course, also gets all these things in a sweeter handling package. But a 408 will ace the gym car park presence test over one of those every time. And we live in a world where that really matters. As this model's lengthy seven-year gestation period suggests, design project manager Pierre-Paul Matei and his team had some difficulty in getting the Peugeot board to sign off on the 408, and it's not difficult to see why. Even Matei admits that giving the car dynamism without hiding its roominess was problematical. Eventually, the project was probably greenlit because this car shares so much with the 308 hatch it was developed alongside. Actually, though, it's closer in quirky concept and size to another unconventional Stellantis Group Gallic model, the Citroen C5X. Peugeot stylists, though, see it as unique, describing it as a reinvention of the mid-sized sedan. It doesn't look much like any sort of sedan from the side, more like a hatch on SUV steroids, the latter imbued by black wheel arch cladding and a ride height four centimetres higher than the hatch segment average. There's 4.69 metres of body length and 1.48 metres of height with a confidently sporty stance and quite a slippery 0.29 CD drag factor. There's a high waistline with this kicked up C-pillar section which aims to disguise the extended rear overhang. And this lower creased black sill separates arches housing mainstream wheel sizes starting at 17 inches. We've got 19 inches here. And if you're intent on spoiling the running cost figures of the top hybrid GT version, you can specify big 20 inch rims on that. All the alloys have custom designed star center caps that better display the latest Peugeot Shield, a bigger version of which, for some reason, also features on the front doors of this GT model. The frontal face varies quite a lot with trim choice. This top GT version gets matrix LED headlights that flow into a distinctive waterfall style front grille with 130 vertical front accents. Lesser variants get eco LED headlights and horizontal grille accents finished in chrome. There's a smart twin creased bonnet and these angled vertical fang style daytime running light strips are a 408 signature flowing into large black scoops. This central Peugeot shield conceals the radar for the car's onboard driver assistance systems. At the rear, the wide track is emphasized by a central trim strip separating tail lamps featuring Peugeot's now familiar three claw lighting signature. GT versions like this one get an enhanced clear lensed 3D LED design. Equally unusual, just in front of this shark fin roof antenna, is this sloping rear profile's upper cat's ear style roof spoiler, which optimizes airflow towards the boot lip spoiler. Lower down, there's a patterned lower section to the bumper, flanked by reflector reversing light clusters. And what it's all based on is the third generation version of the brand's usual EMP2 platform, which cost a rumored 630 million euros to develop. Enough on the outside, will things be equally avant-garde in the cabin? Pretty much, yes. The dashboard and centre console design is exactly the same as that of a Mark III 308 that was apparently created first for this 408, even though this car was introduced 18 months later. If you haven't tried a 308 and come fresh to this design, you'll find it all very in-your-face and angular and very suited to the car's avant-garde exterior. The fascia styling is based on a so-called high wind architecture, which places the air vents in raised positions at face level to improve comfort. And virtually everything you touch feels tactile and of high quality, though you only get the full intended effect with this top GT level of green stitched trim with its smart Alcantara and faux leather upholstery. You don't sit in any way commandingly for a car claiming to have SUV genes in its design. And as with other Peugeots, the first thing you're going to have to decide is whether you can get on with the distinctive eye cockpit 
dash design with its tiny steering wheel above which rather than through which you're supposed to view the instruments. We're a bit tired of media folk whinging about this setup. It works fine for us and apparently we're not alone because the French maker says the majority of its customers really like it. Every brand ought to have a distinctive element in its interior design, but so few do. Well, for Peugeot, this is it, a setup which makes it unnecessary to offer a head-up display. The gauges you view of the virtual variety displayed on a 10-inch screen are unusual too, not only because the narrowness of the display forces them to be curiously small, but also because the speedos on the left and the rev counter, or with the PHEV version, the hybrid power meter, is on the right, a layout contrary to the industry norm. Peugeot obviously hopes that these eccentricities, together with clever 3D graphics for speed, gear ratio and range that hover over the speedometer, will distract drivers from the fact that this screen isn't very configurable, nor can it display any form of navigational mapping. Still, all the information shown is clear and easy to assimilate, the whole layout being rather neatly completed by a French tricolour below in the middle. Anything else you need to know will be found in this central infotainment screen. This one also 10 inches in width, but rather deeper and more informative. In the usual way, the home screen can be divided into different sections for audio, phone and setup features. And temperature controls are permanently sighted at either edge. A row of six shortcut virtual buttons sit along the bottom frame, these being what Peugeot calls eye toggle buttons. So if you want, you can redefine their functionality via the car's app menu. Here we've got mirror screen, climate, navigation, ADAS, safety functions, and phone shortcuts programmed in. To satisfy people who like conventional switches, just below there's a further row of physical buttons, mainly for ventilation features. Unlike with some rival screen setups, there's thankfully a physical volume controller. Plus, you get live system updates. All models feature TomTom connected 3D navigation, and that mirror screen functionality works with wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto mirror screen smartphone connectivity. Voice recognition is also built in, though it's not especially intuitive. Part of the brand's iConnect setup activated by the command OK Peugeot. Normally, you'd expect this central screen layout to flow down into the lower part of the centre stack, but the designers clearly felt more storage space could be freed up by separating out this angular lower console with its diminutive little impulse selector gear shifting switch. That console's upper edge can take a wireless charging mat and there's a deep illuminated well below with USB-C and 12 volt ports. Copying premium makers, Peugeot's concealed the twin cup holders beneath a slatted lid and given the storage box between the seats, which incorporates another illuminated USB-C port, a twin lidded top. Just ahead of that's a phone size cubby, plus you get ticket clips in the sun visors and decently sized flock line door bins. Unlike older era, Peugeot designs, the size of the glove box hasn't been cut in half on right-hand drive models by an encroaching fuse box. As a result, this car can now offer a total of 34 litres of front-of-cabin storage space. What else? Well, the little steering wheels neatly configured with ADAS controls on the left and multimedia function buttons on the right. And all your preferred cabin settings, things like digital displays, the colour of the ambient lighting, your favourite radio stations and so on, can be saved to one of eight user profiles with drivers automatically identified as they get into the car by their smartphone Bluetooth connections. Two smartphones can be connected at once, by the way and you can choose between eight ambient lighting colours. Not so good is the low seating position we mentioned earlier, which exacerbates the issue of poor rear three-quarter vision served up by the big C-pillar blind spots and narrow rear screen. So it's just as well that rear parking sensors are standardised across the range. Lumbar adjustment comes as standard for the beautifully upholstered seats, though unfortunately you have to stretch right to the top of the range to get the option of having them in an uber-supportive, power-operated massaging guise, in which form they've gained the coveted stamp of approval by the AGR, who campaign for healthier backs.
As we mentioned earlier, just about everything you touch has been very nicely trimmed, with soft touch surfaces for the dash top and fascia, ambient lighting strips, and some lovely tactile finishes for plusher GT series variants like this one, which get Alcantara strips running into the doors and the aforementioned green stitching. For some reason though, there's still not the hewn from granite feel of build quality that you get from a Volkswagen Group product. It's difficult to put your finger on just why, because build quality from the French Mullers factory is difficult to fault. Dynamic design, though, compensates hugely, as do little touches like the air quality system that automatically recycles the air distributed by the high set vents when needed, and which in GT series models is embellished by clean cabin technology, which filters out polluting gases and particles. If you've stretched to one of the GT series models, you'll want to consider the optional 10 speaker 690 watt Focal premium hi fi system we've been trying here with its neat little. A pillar tweeters. Right, time to take a look in the rear. Now, as with other fastback style designs, you have to be a little careful to avoid spearing yourself in the chest with the leading corner edge of the rear door when opening it and accessing a part of the car where Peugeot hopes to be able to offer an advantage over similarly priced premium badged coupe SUVs like Audi's Q3 Sportback and BMW's X2. This 408 2.79 metre wheelbase is certainly significantly longer than with models of that sort. You'll want to know what that translates into in terms of rear seat room, so let's take a look. Well, it's certainly not what you'd call spacious back here, or at least it won't be if you front seat folk of at least average height sitting ahead of you. But to be fair, few similarly sized hatch models do much better and the 188 mm knee room figure is reasonable by class standards. The scalloped out seat backs don't help much with space for your knees and there's not a lot of room to slide your feet beneath the seats ahead. But Peugeot claims that minimal tapering of the roof to the C-pillar has maintained headroom, but it's still not overly generous, so you shouldn't be tempted to further reduce it by specifying the optional Tiello panoramic glass roof available to GT customers. As at the front though, classy finishing makes up for much. The way the interior part of this centre armrest is trimmed, for instance, is a far cry from the mediocre mainstream norm. There are two cup holders and a pen tray here, plus the reasonably sized door bins have bottle holders and there are stowage nets on the front seat backs. Coat hooks have been forgotten on the overhead grab handles, but there are beady little LED reading lights above each one, and there's a centre small cubby with twin USB-C ports and twin vents just above. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Now, this powered tailgate is only standard with top GT trim, as is this impractical aluminium strip. Both are pretty unnecessary. As the hatch raises, you notice the two-piece parcel shelf, the nearer part fixed to the inner side of the tailgate glass. A conventionally engined 408 like this one offers 536 litres back here, which is 124 litres more than you get in a Peugeot 308 hatch, but 72 litres less than a 308 SW Estate. The capacity on offer is only a fraction smaller than this car's most natural rival, the Citroen C5X, and as with that car, takes a hit with a hybrid version, down to 471 litres thanks to the size of its underfloor battery. Thanks to this loading area's usefully square shape though, awkward things like folded push chairs should still fit in with little trouble. And the usual bag hooks and floor tie-down points also feature, and there are two elasticated straps on the left-hand cargo area sidewall. In this GT model, fitted with the optional Focal audio system, there's no extra room of any consequence below the boot floor, but without the Focal upgrade, pure tech variants can offer 28 litres of extra space down here and the option of fitting a space saver spare wheel, an extra cost feature unavailable on the hybrid variants, where nearly all the underfloor space is taken up with the system battery. Just above, a side netting compartment features on the right, and you also get a ski hatch for longer items to compensate for the conventional 60-40 split at the rear bench. Folding everything flat can only be done with these cargo sidewall catches if you've stretched to this top GT trim. 
once the backrest is flattened, the conventional 408 will offer you 1,583 litres of capacity or 1,545 litres with the hybrid. From launch and at the time of our test in spring 2023, the 408 range was pretty straightforward. There are three trim levels, Allure, Allure Premium, and this top GT version. And prices started at the time of filming from around £31,000, which gets you the conventional PureTech 130 petrol engine, which, as with all 408s, has to be had with the brand's eight-speed, efficient, automatic transmission. There's a huge premium of almost £9,000 for the alternative petrol plug-in hybrid version, which prices from around £40,000 in base hybrid 180 form. Avoid base trim and you'll be offered the opportunity to find another £1,500 for the only marginally faster hybrid 225 variant. Suggesting rivals isn't easy, as Peugeot reckons this car's designed to be unique. Well, that's not quite true, but it certainly is a design a cut above what you'd pay for a conventional family hatch, like, say, Peugeot's own identically engineered 308, which, with the same engines and comparable trim, will save you around £2,500 in PureTech 130 form or around £3,000 as a hybrid. 408 pricing, though, isn't really very different to what you'd be asked to pay for a similarly sized family SUV. Peugeot's own 3008 model starts from around £33,000. But let's say you're looking for something equally distinctive in this price and size bracket. Are there alternatives you might like? Well, the most obvious one is the car that in concept is closest to this one, this model Stellantis Group stablemate Citroen C5X. This offers all the same engineering, but is priced comparably to a 308 hatch, which, as we just said, means savings of around £2,500 in PureTech 130 form or around £3,000 as a hybrid. What else? Well, a mid-sized SUV coupe might also hit the mark for a potential 408 customer. Premium brand models of that kind in the same price bracket, like the Audi Q3 Sportback and the BMW X2, are significantly smaller. A Renault Arcana, which is a full hybrid, is closer in size and much better value and would save you around £2,500 over a 408 PureTech, but doesn't have the style or quality of this Peugeot. Another similarly sized style orientated genre at this price point is that of the shooting brake, a kind of fastback stylized estate. Kia's Proceed offers this affordably from around 27,000. You'll need around 36,000 pounds to get it with a premium badge in the form of shooting brake versions of the Mercedes CLA or the Genesis G70. If, having considered all of these options, you conclude that there really is nothing quite like this 408 at this size and price point, then you're going to need to know about standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Now, as you'd hope for the money being asked here, even entry-level Allure spec gives you quite a lot. Specifically, you get 17-inch Silex alloy wheels, eco LED headlamps with smart beam, high beam assist, signature LED daytime running lights and claw effect LED rear lamps. You can also tick off power folding mirrors, auto headlamps and wipers, a multi driving mode selector, an acoustic tinted windscreen, rear parking sensors, dark tinted rear side and tailgate windows, a Thatcham Category 1 approved alarm, and a very complete level of camera safety kit, which we'll cover off for you in a moment. Inside, with an Allure 408 variant, there's automatic dual zone air conditioning with an AQS3 air quality system, an electrochrome frameless rear view mirror, driver's seat lumbar adjustment, a 10 inch digital instrument cluster, and a curiously small multifunction split leather and gloss steering wheel as part of the unusual Peugeot I cockpit dash design. There's upholstery, part trimmed in Isabella synthetic leather, ambient lighting for the door panels, a 180 degree colour reversing camera and a rear seat ski hatch. 
Media connectivity is taken care of by another 10-inch screen, this one the central infotainment monitor, which incorporates voice recognition, a six-speaker DAB audio system, Bluetooth and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless smartphone mirroring. Plus, there's connected navigation with TomTom Tom Live updates and speed cam alerts. Along with over-the-air updates and voice recognition responding to the phrase, OK Peugeot. You can also interact with your 408 when you're away from it, thanks to the My Peugeot app. Via this, you can see essential data like fuel consumption and fuel level. Plus, you can make servicing appointments and access a digital handbook. Want more kit? Well, mid-range Allure premium spec adds keyless entry, a wireless phone charger, larger 19-inch Yaspe wheels, a gloss black waistline, acoustic laminated front side windows and a drive assist pack with extra camera safety features, which we'll tell you more about shortly. Things start to get really luxurious with the top GT trim level we've got here, marked out by these 19-inch graphite diamond-cut alloy wheels, a front grille with vertical body-coloured accents and lion emblem badging on the front doors. The ultra-slim LED headlights gain intelligent matrix technology with five lighting modes, while the 3D LED tail lamps play a sequential welcome sequence when you unlock the car. There's also a smart power tailgate you can activate with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper. Inside at GT level, the green stitched upholstery combines Alcantara with Isabella faux leather. There's a frameless rear view mirror. The sun visors come with concealable LED vanity mirror lighting. And you get green stitched luxury carpet mats. A driver sport pack adds a personalised colour theme to the digital instrument display. And sport adjustment for the steering and accelerator pedals. The steering wheel gains heat, green stitching and full grain leather, plus there's a Mistral black roof liner and aluminium door sills and boot sill trim. On to options. Now, there's very little you can add to base Allure spec, but with an Allure premium model, you can add a heated steering wheel. The top two trim levels can also be had with a 360 degree surround view camera and a smartphone charger. Most of the choiciest options, though, are reserved for this ritziest GT trim level. Take the seat pack, which gives you a 10-way powered driver's seat approved by the AGR, who campaigned for healthy backs. That enhanced driver's seat featuring adjustable cushions and welcome movements as you enter the car. The seat pack also includes six-way powered adjustment for the front passenger seat, plus massage functions and heat for both front chairs. You might also want Nappa leather upholstery, available in either Naboo blue or Mistral black. GT customers can also opt for a Tiello opening panoramic sunroof and a unique in class night vision system, which displays in the instrument cluster and, using an infrared camera in the grill, alerts the driver to pedestrians and animals over 50 centimetres tall at a distance of between 15 and 200 metres. With your 408 GT, you might also want the 10-speaker 690-watt Focal premium hi-fi system we've been trying here, which has a 12-channel amplifier and Archimit digital sound processing. And those GT folk who've opted for a hybrid power plant can upgrade to larger 20-inch matte onyx black monolith alloy wheels. On the subject of the hybrid variants, you'll probably want to set aside a little more for the upgraded 7.4 kilowatt hour onboard charger that halves your PHEV charging times, but which Peugeot irritatingly feels the need to require another £400 for. Across the range, you can specify a tow bar and if you choose this PureTech model, you'll also be offered the option of a space saver spare wheel. But bear in mind that you may well have to pay extra for your choice of paint colour. The only standard one is this test car's Obsession Blue. There are three other metallic colours, a rather striking Alexia Red, varnish paint finish and the option of a pearlescent white finish. On to safety equipment. Now, as you'd expect, all variants get autonomous braking. Peugeot's advanced emergency braking system, which isn't very advanced on base spec PureTech Allure models, where it lacks the video camera and radar systems fitted elsewhere in the range. 
Disappointingly, with the two more affordable trim levels, unless you pay extra, you do without the brand's Connect SOS safety system as well, which will alert the emergency services with your GPS location if the airbags go off. All 408s do get an automatic post-collision braking system, which will brake the car after an impact so that you're less likely to go on and hit something else. Lane keeping assist is also standardised across the lineup, and as we mentioned earlier, there's high beam assist to automatically dip your headlights for you at night. Earlier, we mentioned the drive assist pack you get from Allure Premium Spec upwards, and this primarily gives you long range blind spot detection, which works at up to 75 metres and alerts you if you're about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle. Uh, rear cross traffic alert, which warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. And adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which automatically maintains your speed to vehicles in front on the highway. And when you come across a tailback, will seamlessly bring you to a stop. Then, when appropriate, automatically start you off again. With the top GT spec model, like this one, the drive assist pack will further include lane positioning assist as well, which is about the closest this car gets to semi-autonomous drive capability. With the top two trim levels, you can take another step towards that by adding in Peugeot's Drive Assist 2.0 pack, which includes two further camera features. Anticipated Intelligent Speed Assist, which suggests adapting your speed based on current limit signs, and Semi-Automatic Lane Change, which, as the name suggests, can perform semi-automatic lane change manoeuvres. Of course, across the range, all the usual passive safety features come included. Twin front, side and curtain airbags, twin ISOFIX child seat fittings for the rear seat, front seat safety headrests, ESP stability control and ABS with automatic hazard light activation for heavy braking. We're all aware that fashion has a price tag, and so it is here. In our driving section, we briefed you on the 103 kilos of extra body weight that this 408 carries over its 308 showroom stablemate. So what sort of penalty does that exact in terms of running costs? Well, a surprisingly high one, actually, given that all the engineering is otherwise the same. The conventional PureTech 130 408 variant we're trying here manages up to 48.1 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 133 grams per kilometre of CO2. Compare that to the figures for an equivalent 308, a best of 51.9 mpg and up to 123 grams per kilometre, an improvement that sees the 408 PureTech model's 32% benefiting kind taxation figure lowered to 30% in the comparable 308. What all that reasoning ignores, though, is the reality that a typical 408 customer is someone far more likely to have been considering an SUV than a conventional family hatch. And if you compare to one of those, then this Peugeot offers a very useful running cost improvement. To take just one typical similarly sized SUV rival at random, a Kia Sportage in volume selling 48 volt mild hybrid 1.6 litre T GDI form manages Frugality Bests limited to 44.1 mpg and 146 grams per kilometre. The plug-in hybrid versions of this 408 also suffer a little in efficiency terms compared to their 308 hatch model counterparts, though because the figures are as otherworldly as is usually the case with PHEVs, it seems to matter less. Both 408 hybrid variants are supposed to deliver around 270 mpg on the combined cycle, in reality, expect the kind of fuel returns you'd find with a decent diesel and are rated at 24 grams per kilometre of CO2, which accordingly delivers the low 8% benefiting kind taxation figure that will compensate for much of the upfront hybrid price premium. A hybrid meter gauge on the dash helps you drive economically, stay out of the power section and keep the needle in eco for best results. And you can monitor your zero emissions running via a neat Cyan LED zero emissions driving indicator in the frameless rear view mirror. 
You'll find a 3.7 kilowatt single phase charging supported as standard, which means recharges will take three hours and 25 minutes using a 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box. Annoyingly, Persia feels the need to charge £400 extra for the 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger many will want for much quicker battery replenishment times. With that fitted, your 408 Hybrid's battery will need one hour and 40 minutes to be topped up. At the other extreme, connected to a conventional three-pin domestic socket, a 408 Hybrid will need seven and a half hours for a recharge. The plug-in hybrid 408 variants offer a thermal pre-conditioning function too. Via the My Peugeot smartphone app or by using the vehicle's touchscreen, owners can schedule a wake-up time for the battery. This means that the cells can be at the optimal temperature for efficiency from the time you start up. Plus, of course, the interior can also be pre-cooled or pre-heated as well. As for public charging, well, via Peugeot's free-to-move e-solution setup, 408 customers are offered access to over 260,000 charging points across Europe. Of course, you'll need to allow longer to charge if you choose the full EV version of this car, the E408, still being readied for launch as we made this film. This has a 400 volt battery with 50 kilowatt hours of usable capacity, or 54 kilowatt hours gross, and should go around 250 miles between charges. Those charging times hadn't been confirmed at the time of our test, but we wouldn't expect them to be much different from those of the brand's smaller E208, which uses an older generation version of the same battery. That would mean a full charge from empty taking seven and a half hours. And with a public 50 kilowatt rapid charger, the replenishment time to charge from 15 to 80 percent being 45 minutes. If you're fortunate enough to find a 100 kilowatt rapid charger with your E408, that would fall to around 30 minutes. Owners can opt to purchase any 408 with a single service plan to cover all essential maintenance. Service intervals are every year or 20,000 miles. And if you've chosen any kind of battery powered 408, you'll be given a certificate of battery capacity after each service to make it easier to resell your car by being able to guarantee its level of battery capacity. The battery in question, by the way, comes with an eight year or 100,000 mile warranty for 70% of its capacity. Finally, insurance groups. The 1.2 litre PureTech models rate between Group 19 and 21E. For the hybrid 180, it's between Group 28 and 29E. And for this hybrid 225, it's between Group 28E and 30E. To finish with, let's look at residual values. When we tested the current 308 hatch, three-year, 30,000-mile residuals of just over 50% were being quoted. We'd expect this 408 to significantly better that strong showing. When you boil everything right down to it, the 408 is merely a 308 hatch with trendier tailoring. Yet it feels so much more than that. Choose one and your family and friends will spend hours arguing over exactly what kind of car it is. Missing the point, which is that this Peugeot doesn't want to be pigeonholed into any particular category. It's style-led without being impractical and futuristic, but also very much of its time. It's a pity that the budget didn't extend into allowing the design team to create a unique interior. But you could argue that the cabin it shares with the brand's more conventional 308 is already unusual enough. Less of an issue is all the carryover engineering, though there's nothing in either the engine range or the handling setup of this car to supply the sporting vibe the French maker claims this 408 has. And it would be a bit of a struggle to justify the price premium being demanded for the hybrid models over the conventional PureTech version we've been trying here. Otherwise, the issues are much as with the 308, primarily the love it or hate it eye cockpit design and the slightly slow-witted mandatory auto gearbox. As with that car, there's a feeling of elegant interior quality, but not necessarily deep-rooted build integrity. The cabins are cut above what you get from most similarly sized mainstream branded models though, as you hope it would be for the prices being asked. So, will the 408 set a new trend or be in future remembered as an interesting curiosity? 
it will be fascinating to find out. Music